Uh, 466, get it together. Module three, topic one, lesson two. And we're specifically talking activity three, the last activity out of this lesson, because in the previous activities, we figured out that angle angle was one of the triangle similarity shortcuts. Side 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 was a second triangle similarity shortcut. Reminder, you have to make fractions of corresponding sides. And then last of all, today, right now, this video, side angle side. Establishing the SAS similarity criterion. We're going to investigate another way to determine whether or triangles are similar. This time we have to use what's called the included angle. And so we'll see that described. We have seen that described in previous modules. And so it's coming back into practice now. Recall that an included angle is an angle formed by two consecutive sides of a figure and an included side. So this is the included angle is a line segment between two consecutive angles, which I'm not actually going to highlight the included side because we're not using that in this shape. But if you did angle side angle in a previous geometry triangle congruence shortcut video or practicing, that's what they mean. Angle side angle would be that sentence. Not worth writing down, but just hear me say it. Construct triangle D prime, E prime, F prime by duplicating an angle and doubling the lengths of the sides that make up that angle. To be successful in that step, tracing paper. Construct the new side length separately and then construct the, tri the triangle. So I'm going to kind of ignore this sentence here. There is a requirement by our, our text to use compasses and straight edges like the geometry tools, but the ancients didn't have tracing paper, yo. Get a pencil, tracing paper, and let's trace angle E. In fact, be very careful that we're gonna trace ED and EF as well. The only side I'm not interested in tracing is DF. Also, I picked angle E. Sorry, I'm talking while I should have been working. I picked angle E because it's, it's a big enough angle. Angle D and angle F, they're so little. And because they're so small, maybe there's mistakes that can be made in the angle measure that we're gonna create. And I wanna try to limit you know, mistakes, right? Okay, so D to E, little letter name. And then make sure you're getting it as accurate as possible. Do not bump the tracing paper. So I'm loading up that side with graphite. Then I'm gonna take some scratch paper and I'm going to, well, this is the same triangle the entire part of the lesson. Why did I do this tracing? They, they, okay, I see what's happening here. I see what's happening, yeah. I trace the other side of the tracing paper because I wanna put graphite on both sides so that when I trace this triangle, I'm gonna to try to move it a little bit lower down this spot right here. When I trace this angle, I'm first of all duplicating the angle. To duplicate means to copy. So there's my, in light pencil, there's my copy. I'm gonna use my straight edge to make the line be bigger. So I'm just gonna make the angle extend out. I'm not measuring how far out right now. Just measuring, drawing the angle out from angle E, this is now gonna be known as E prime angle. Probably worth a pen because this should be inked. Now, what the purpose of this activity is, is to comment on you need an angle and you need two sides that come off of that angle and that's enough information to make a triangle. In fact, it's enough information to establish similarity between the two triangles. So. I'm gonna take my, my shape, I'm gonna mark and mark those two edges. And that one didn't mark so well, so I'm gonna make it be a little more bold. <clears throat> I'm doubling the side length. The easy way to double a side length without a ruler is to copy it and paste it. And so that's what's happened is I'm copying and pasting so that now this coordinate is at F prime, because that's where it came from, and that's two distances of EF away, and then DE, ooh, careful, careful, probably right there, and did it highlight, make it darker again. I got to go back and add some more graphite to the other side of the paper. Okay. There. 
Yeah, that popped in. So there's my dot. So that's going to be now D prime. And what I need to do is I need to actually create the triangle. So to actually create the triangle, this is now going to be twice as big as it was originally. So I can draw D prime, F prime as my third side. And I'm, I'm telling you right now, this triangle is similar to that one. One way we know is that we can actually like move the triangle into position. And it looks like this triangle does fit in that corner. And we can move the triangle over to this position. And it does look like this triangle fits in that corner. And of course, we knew it originally fit in corner where E was. We need to measure the angles. OK, so let's set up. Um, this is the same triangle as before. So I'm actually going to kind of cheese it a little bit. I'm going to go back to what we did on page 465. And I'm going to get all of these measurements down. I'm going to get down the measurements that matter, right? So in fact, am I writing it? Measure. Ba -da -da, ba -da -da, ba -da -da, ba -da measure. I showed you how to measure angles and sides in the previous video. Go back and watch 465 if you haven't. But I'm going to tell you that this right here, okay, this is a good pause the video moment. To measure the angles and sides of triangle D prime, E prime, F prime, and triangle D, E, F, and are the two triangles similar? Uh, I'm going to say I have measured it because the two triangles that I've done, they've always been the same size. This is not the same size. I'm I'm talking too much. I'm just gonna start going. Um, I need a pen. I'm trying to I'm trying to be cheesy and it doesn't work. So the measure of angle E, and I'm going to. This is what I did in the previous video. I thought these were all the same. They're not. Can't get away with it. You gotta go. Gotta do it. I'm trying to draw the, t the sides of the small triangle longer so that the protractor can actually function properly. Otherwise, I would be guessing, at, you know, it looks like a 65 degree angle. No, uh -uh. center of the protractor on E. Rotate the protractor so that the line that goes out towards 180 or zero, whichever way it is, but you're lined up with that edge of the, tr of the uh, triangle and then Trying to move it into frame. Out here is going to be our degree symbol. But you've got to start by counting from 0 up by, you know, from 0 up. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Not quite 110. Maybe 108. 108 degrees. Pop that in there. In fact, write that, that that's the measure of angle E, 108 degrees. Now, if you believe that you did it accurately, and that you trust that your calculations are correct, then this angle, line it up, center it up, should also be 108. And I'm gonna claim I'm off because I'm human. I'm off by like three degrees. I got like 111 for my angle measure, but that's just because I'm human and I didn't do what the ancients did. I, they, they knew not to use tracing paper, apparently. The measure of angle E prime is the same. So, We've measured the angle for angle E. You should go measure angle D, angle F, angle D prime, angle F prime. I'm going to leave that off the page, but I'm going to comment on that is that's what's missing. So here, let's put this word. What's the measure of angle D? What's the measure of angle F? Is it equal to the measure of angle D prime? Is it equal to the measure of angle F prime? What are those two numbers? And then I'm also going to leave one more uh, set of calculations alone for now for this video. I'm going to say D, E is going to be an, an, a measurement. Go measure it. And that D prime, E prime is going to be two of those, twice the amount. So go figure out that that's actually true. Is this side length, D, E, literally like half the size of D prime, E prime? Does it take two of them to match up? Same thing for E, F and E prime, F prime, and D, F and D prime. F prime because what you will find out is are these two triangles similar? Yes. Two pairs of corresponding sides are proportional and the corresponding included angles are congruent. Determine whether this is sufficient information to, in to conclude the triangles are similar. Yes. By side, angle, side, similarity. So two pairs of corresponding sides, that's the S. S and the corresponding included angle, that's the A included in the middle, the triangles 
are similar. In the next video, I have one more question. In fact, um, now nah, I'll make that be another video. Make it be a short video. Thank you for watching page 466. We wrap up and slash conclude our uh, lesson on the triangle similarity shortcuts. Lesson two will be done in the next two videos. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you on page 467.